What's up, fragrant world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. And welcome to a very special video, one I am very late to create. This is my top 10 niche fragrances for the summer of 2019. A very special video for me because this marks not exactly a calendar year, but this type of video that I'm making marks a year since I took my hiatus. The video I did before I took my hiatus was fragrances for the summer for 2018. So here we are about a year later, I'm back and I'm happy to be here. I'm just really grateful to be back into making content for you guys and hopefully you find this list enjoyable and even helpful if you're looking for recommendations. Now, really quickly, what makes a summer fragrance? As we probably already know, something fresh, maybe citrusy, aromatic, even aquatic, things along those lines. Something light and breezy and airy and easy to wear in the hot weather that's not going to become cloying when the heat hits it. Now that being said, I do have a few fragrances in the list that are what you could call season benders. They're not necessarily cold weather fragrances, but they are fragrances that might thrive a little bit more, or at least are known to thrive a little bit more in the colder weather. But I have them here and I have them with very specific functions. So I will get into that in a second here, but we're going to start the list off with a couple honorable mentions. And these are samples or decants. They're fragrances that I wish I had bottles of and maybe I will someday soon. First one up, Teralba from the house of Mask Milano. I love this house. I'm loving this house with every fragrance that I smell and I love this scent. I just recently talked about it a couple weeks ago in my Fresh and Clean week, which is one of the videos in my Fragrances of the Week series. If you've been skipping those, what are you doing? You're missing out on a lot of great stuff here. This is a wonderful scent. I talk about it in detail in that video and I also talk about it in detail in my Mosk Milano review. So I'll link one of the two up here. I'm not sure which one, but you'll see. Check out the card and learn more about Teralba. Up next, last honorable mention, a tiny little decan. I, there's no reason for me to show you this. This is Zerzhov's 1861 Renaissance. Man, this is the best performing fresh fragrance that I've put my nose on in terms of an actual bona fide summer fragrance and one that will last you eight plus hours with great projection and sillage, wonderful scent, I hope to get a bottle of this. Uh, yet another scent that I talked about recently in one of my Fragrance of the Week videos. So make sure you check that out again if you wanna know more about it. And I also have a dedicated review that I did a while back so you can check that out too if you wanna know more about the scent. All right, let's jump into the list proper. And number 10, Creed Aventus. Why is this here? because I would be lying if I told you I'm not gonna at least wear it a little bit, but I'm sticking true to my vow to wear this less for the year, and that's why it's at the number 10 spot. I love the scent, but I'm gonna try to reach for it the least out of all of these fragrances here. So that's Creed Aventus at number 10. At number nine, a fragrance that I have been trying to wear more of, it's just so powerful that it is a little bit hard to wear comfortably sometimes, unless I'm spending most of my time outdoors. This is from the house of Embrace Perfume, and this is called Embrace Freedom, more or less their flagship fragrance. Some of the main notes in here, I believe, are grapefruit, vetiver, ambergris, and even leather. Such a, a very powerful an earthy fresh scent. Again, that vetiver and that grapefruit combo creates a nice freshness and zinginess with the citrus, but it is a little earthy, but still kind of aromatic. And that ambergris, the musky nature of it is just beautiful when it dries. The scent is a little bit linear, but I really enjoy it nonetheless. Uh, again, powerful scent. This is a parfum extract. And just so you guys know, these fragrances are a little on the pricey side. This is definitely niche pricing. I don't remember the exact number for this one, but they're gonna be looking around the four or $500 ballpark. But again, high quality ingredients, high concentration, 
So you get what you pay for in this. That is embrace freedom. Probably one I'm not going to wear on the warmest days of the year. Up next, this is one that I reviewed recently, which you can check out here. And this is Juliet Has a Gun, Vanilla Vibes, their latest release. You've been seeing this floating around, of course, I'm sure, and hopefully you've seen my review. This is such a sexy vanilla scent for the summer. If I'm going to pull for a vanilla dominated fragrance for the summer, it's this one. Without a question, beautiful, kind of almost suntan lotion-y, almost tropical, but creamy vanilla with orchid and sandalwood and tonka bean. It's sweet and it is, again, kind of succulent with the vanilla and a little salty too, which is beautiful. It's almost like salty sun-kissed skin. That's what I said in my review. But it does have an airiness to it. It's not super thick and gourmand and heavy. It's, it's transparent enough to pull off in the warm weather, but it still has great performance. It's still gonna last on the skin for a long time. It's an eau de parfum and it's a beautiful scent. So if you wanna know more about it, even though I told you mostly what you need to know about it, you can check out the review, but I will be wearing this as much as I can. That is Juliet Has a Gun Vanilla Vibes. Up next, this is somewhat of a season bender in my opinion. This is Reflection Man from Amouage. And this is probably, if I'm not mistaken, I would say the freshest offering that Amouage has for men. I could be mistaken about that because I haven't put my nose on all of them. But this is the one that you see pop up the most when people are talking about summer niche fragrances. This is one that I would wear in elegant situations in the daytime or the nighttime. But if depending on when I wear it, if I wear it in the day, I only put on maybe two sprays because this stuff is very strong on me. In the nighttime, I might put on a little bit more. Beautiful, creamy, fresh floral scent. It's, I think it's a woody floral musk is how it's categorized. Sandalwood, jasmine, uh, neroli is in here. There's some pink pepper. Really, really nice, elegant. So elegant, just a touch of powdery nature to make it, again, that little bit of elegance in there. I love this Reflection Man from Amouage. I'll be wearing this in elegant situations, as I said. Up next is a fragrance that topped my summer list last year. And I still love it, but I'm reaching for it a little bit less this year for a good reason. This is Millicene Imperial from Creed. This is a summer staple. And this is such a versatile scent because you can wear this casually. Again, it's like aquatic and fresh and fruity and musky. Uh, so you can wear it casually to the beach or just doing whatever, lounging, hanging out. But it's also very elegant. You can wear this on a night out too, maybe to a little bit more classy event, but it works so well. I get decent performance out of my batch, which is I think from 2016. I, I can't really speak about recent batches, but this stuff wears really great for me. And again, it's bright enough. There's citruses in it too, so it's perfect for summer. One of the best for summer, in my opinion, from the House of Creed, but I do have a couple more from Creed that I like a little bit more than this one. Next, from the House of Raja Parfums, this is Elysium. This is one that you've probably, again, seen a lot of. I reviewed it when it came out a couple years ago. You can check out the review there. Fresh and citrusy and musky and floral and woody and everything. There's juniper in here. There's a lot of juniper. That's what I get the most out of this with grapefruit as well. It's, it's really such an easy to wear scent, high quality niche designer. <laughs> That's what you could call it, I guess. It's like a high quality designer scent. Super high quality ingredients. Great performance, at least for me with this concentration, which is a parfum cologne. It's gonna last on the skin most of the day. I get a good eight to 10 hours of longevity. But in terms of projection, not so much, maybe an hour or two. But sillage, which again is the scent trail that you leave behind you, not so much how it's jumping off your skin, the sillage on this. I find is wonderful, especially when you're outdoors and the wind is blowing and it picks it up and carries the scent. It's really pleasant. It's basically representative of what you see here. It's kind of a blue scent, but there's more depth to it as with Raja Dove's fragrances in general. 
So that is Elysium. From the house of Aqua de Parma, another blue bottle. Fico di Amalfi. I am so happy I have this. I almost sold it last year. And fortunately for me, it didn't sell. So I kept it. I put it on one day after that. I'm like, why did I try to get rid of this? This is a beautiful fig scent. You got quite a bit of citruses in here. You got citron, you got lemon, grapefruit, bergamot. There's of course fig and fig leaves in here. There's pink pepper, it's a little woody. It comes off kind of fresh and spicy and fruity and also kind of watery, which I love. That's my favorite part of this. I'm not sure exactly what makes it watery, but that's just to my nose. I haven't heard anyone else say that. I love this, perfect for daytime casual. So that's Fico di Amalfi from Aqua di Parma. Next from Creed, this is one that has recently been blowing my mind and I featured it on fragrances that have been blowing my mind <laughs> in that video, which you guys can check out if you haven't already. This is Silver Mountain Water and this is a fantastic scent. <sighs> it's, it's unusual but pleasant, that's the best way I can describe it. It's fresh, it's kind of metallic-y, almost inky, but there's something about it that's just so captivating when it's in the air. You get a lot of black currant, so it's kind of fruity almost and sweet, but not too much. Quite a bit of tea in here. It's musky, there's some bergamot in here. It's, oof, it's wonderful. And I can't believe this fragrance was released in the 90s. It smells timeless to me. It smells very modern. You would not know it was released in the 90s. And then there's a reason why it's still on shelves. It's unique. It's such a unique take on fresh. And I think it's beautiful with the picture that it paints, just with the name itself, Silver Mountain Water. It literally smells like that. So pleasant to wear, almost any occasion in the summer. So that's Silver Mountain Water from Creed. Next, this is number two. I love this fragrance. This is most definitely a season bender in my opinion but it does have some facets of it that function okay for the hot weather. This is Layton from Parfums de Marly. Recently featured this on my top beast mode fragrances for 2019. Man, this is a strong scent. It's sweet, spicy, floral, woody, everything you want in a mass pleasing scent, but with great quality. And like I said, great performance. Uh, it's again, sweet, so you got quite a bit of vanilla in there, there's cinnamon, there's some apple in there, it is spicy, there's cardamom in there, a myriad of florals. This is one that I will wear the most in the evening. If I have any fragrance that I really pull for in the evening, in the summer, it's this one. Because it does have a little bit of a freshness to it, but again, it's, ooh, it's just enthralling. This is Layton from Parfums de Marley. I love this stuff. Hey, so, real quick, I wanted to pop in here and say, before we announce the number one fragrance for the summer for the niche side of things, I wanted to announce winners of the oil perfumery giveaway. If you missed the oil perfumery video that I did reviewing the fragrance oils from oil perfumery, too bad, <laughs> but you can still check it out if you want. Um, Cause there was a giveaway attached and I'm gonna announce the winners now. I originally said there was gonna be one, but I decided to choose two this time. So I did a random picker I'm not gonna do a whole video showing you that because I didn't feel like doing that. But I chose two at random. First winner is going to be Crystal Burchett. Hope I said your name right. Congratulations, you'll be receiving four of the eight oils that I'll be giving away. And the other four are going to Crochet. So you're getting the other four, hope you enjoy. Both of you, I will be trying to reach out to you maybe via YouTube Instant Messenger. If not, you can go to my channel description. My email should be in there. Send me an email with your shipping info and we'll try to get those samples out to you as soon as we can. Hope to hear from you too. Congratulations. Until the next giveaway, make sure you guys stay tuned and on to the number one spot. And at number one, if you have been watching my Fragrances of the Week videos, and you've seen this one. If you haven't been watching my Fragrance of the Week videos, then you have not seen this on my channel. So I would imagine that a majority of you have not seen this fragrance on my channel yet. 
This is from the House of Creed. This is one that is not all that talked about these days, but it is kind of getting a little bit more talk now than it used to in the past few years. I'm not really sure why, but I've seen several reviewers feature this in their list just recently, within the past month or so. And I'm happy it's getting some talk. This is a recent acquisition of mine. I got this within the past month or two. And this is yet another one that came out in the 90s, but it doesn't, well, I gotta say, this one kind of does smell like it, but in a good way. This is Royal Water from Creed. Yes. Man, this is, oof. I get mint and citrus and basil and musk. That's basically what I get out of here. It's fresh and cooling, almost aquatic but it's a little herbaceous with that basil, so it has a bit of a green nature to it, and the ambergris is beautiful on the dry down. I think there's maybe even some musk in here too. So this scent, again, is fresh and kind of a little bit sweet and cooling and aromatic and musky, but there's a little bit of this touch of old school vintage nature to it, to my nose, and I've seen a split decision on this topic. But to me, this smells just a little bit somewhere deep in the depths of the scent when you smell it. It kind of reminds you of an older gentleman's fragrance. I think of something like Bois de Portugal from Creed or even a little bit of maybe like Eau Sauvage from Dior. In fact, Eau Sauvage from Dior smells very similar to this one to me, to my nose. And that's a scent that I absolutely love as well for the same reason I love this one, but this is upper echelon i love this stuff i get good performance up to seven hours for me for a fresh scent which is great super versatile i can wear it just about anywhere so this is royal water i'm going to be giving this a lot of love this summer i love this scent Oof, so happy i have this so now it's time for you guys to sound off in the comments let me know either what you think of my list or let me know at least one fragrance you're gonna be pulling for this summer. And I want you guys to try to make an effort to wear something that maybe you wouldn't normally wear for the summer. Maybe if there's a summer scent that you have in your wardrobe that doesn't normally make it into the rotation, make an effort to put it in there. Just make yourself wear these fragrances that you kind of just look at and see what happens. You never know, you might rediscover a love for a scent. I've really had to force myself to do that uh, this year and as a result it's kind of shuffled some things around in ways I didn't expect so I'm really happy about that it's always good to keep things fresh that's why we're here on the Stay Fresh Champ anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in really appreciate it peace see you in the next one